Well, good morning. I am very excited today because we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We have a very unique uh, presentation for you today. Our webinars have uh, been very exciting. We get uh, a lot of attendance. It's kind of that dead week right now um, between the close of the initial part of uh, the business tax season. But so we're not expecting a whole lot of people, which is probably a good time for us to test this new system. But I'm very excited about it. So instead of doing a slide deck, we are going to do something completely different today. And we're just going to jump right in. So first of all, I'd like to welcome you. It is 11 a.m. on the Pacific Coast. We are now in Pacific Daylight Time over here. We did have the, um, the time change springing forward. So that has taken a toll on our family. I don't know about you guys why they do that right by tax season. Um, it's got to be tough for a lot of you folks. In any event, this is a webinar brought to you by schoolofbookkeeping.com to help you ignite your practice. And you can, if you're here on a trial, um, thank you very much for being here. Sometimes we let our free members in. Um, so if you're here for that reason, great. We hope you stick around, we've got some good stuff. I am Eric Greenspan. Now I used to do a slide about this, but I decided this is gonna be our new way of doing it and everything is in a browser tab. We'll see how it goes. So if you wanna learn about me, you can visit ericgreenspan.com. I'm a dad, I um, coach soccer, I shuttle kids back and forth to hockey and somehow figure out a way to pay for all of that. <clears throat> I've been doing this for a long time. In the Zoom um, help center, there's a great article and I'm gonna put this in the chat for you if anybody wants to read it, which will help you figure out how to raise your hand. If you look at the bottom, you can see the controls and up in the top, there's various places for you to raise hands, Q and A, chat, and you can mute and unmute and what have you if you're uh, speaking, of course. And then one of the things that you really need to focus on is making sure that you maximize the screen of the Zoom window so you can view the webinar in its entirety. If things are small, that'll make it better for you. So check out that link if you're having any troubles. All right, so this is Travel Like a Pro. And we um, ask that you go here to register. Those of you that are here did. You click on this link, it takes you over to a Zoom registration very quick, and then you're here and you get notified. All right, so let's get going. Not too long ago, our family, and it wasn't just once, uh, was evacuated from the fire, the Thomas fire here in Montecito, and then later there was the mud and that was more catastrophic. It took a number of lives. And we were evacuated uh, off and on uh, several times um, for a period of over 10 days and other people even longer. And I learned a lot. And I learned something in particular about security, which we're gonna talk about when we get to the firewall section. But it made me think, you know, all that traveling that I've done uh, in my career and a little bit here and there now, and whether it's for work or for, for pleasure, and then being evacuated, it makes you think about stuff. So I decided to do this webinar for you uh, to share some things that I've done over the course of time uh, to get myself established as a great traveler. Now I'm gonna start us with our first poll question and I'm gonna ask any of you uh, that are here to please respond no matter what, use this uh, polling system. If you're here for CPE, it's absolutely required. You must respond to all the poll questions. So if you're here for CPE is the question, and I think it's great that we've getting a lot of people that saying they are, that's cool. All right, so let's move on. Also, if you want to ask a question, put it in the Q&A, that's at the bottom of the Zoom window. If you wanna chat openly, you can use chat and you can select whether it's all panelists or uh, uh, just panelists or panelists and attendees. All right, so I'm gonna start off by making a list. And I think that's probably what most of us would do if we were going to uh, if we were going to travel, but many don't. And, and I'm more than happy to provide this list at the end of this. We can put it up in School of Bookkeeping's documents. But I wanted to make this list because I wanted to kind of go through it with you. And one of the items on the list is to make a list. Make a list of things like objectives that you want to accomplish at the conference or uh, a list of, of things that you might want to do while you're there or a list of you know, make sure you have, if you're not using some sort of a, uh, a list management system for tasks, this is a great time when you're on an airplane or on a bus or on a train to think about those types of things and make some plans. 
Before you leave, uh, and this is one of those lists, before you leave, you wanna make sure you update your OS on your mobile devices, and that's whether it's your, your iPhone, your Android, your, your PC, your Mac, it doesn't make any difference. Make sure you update those so that they're at their latest levels, if so desired. Uh, on iPhone, that's generally the case. If it's a massive upgrade, not necessarily right before you leave, but if it's just an iteration within like 11.3 to 11.4, I would do it. Uh, make sure you have some batteries, and there's all sorts of different types of batteries that we might want to have, but if you're using like a mobile present, uh, presenting device, or if you've got any kind of devices that do require batteries, I always keep a, a few uh, AA and a few AAA, usually four of each, in my backpack uh, when I travel because there's all kinds of things that you might need them for. Make sure the night before that you charge everything. Don't get up in the morning and hop on an airplane and realize you forgot to charge your phone. That is frustrating. Make sure it's charging and it's charging properly. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about cables in a bit. And when I do, I recommend that if you keep your, your phone next to your bed, that you have a, a long enough cable so that you can use it and it's functional and that it can set next to the bed, but it doesn't get um, in the way. So. 10 feet is too long, three feet is too short, six feet I think is the perfect bedside cable. I'll show you which ones I love in a moment. Tums, this is kind of a joke, but every single backpack bag uh, that I have has Tums in it. You never know when you're gonna be caught somewhere eating some kind of chicken cordon bleu or, or some other pasta dish at a, an event. How many chicken dinners have we had? And you just get an upset stomach. Tums can save the day and they're easy to throw in your pocket or your backpack. I'm gonna talk about cables in just a moment, but cables are important. Power cables, connection cables, watch cables, so many of them today. And I'm gonna show you how to make that simple. Backup power packs, I'm also gonna talk about those in a moment. Maybe some energy bars or other snacks. Do you use cloud storage if you do uh, updated. If you don't consider it, this is a great thing for traveling. Whenever, when we got evacuated last time, I took my offline data and put it up in the cloud just in case I would need it or in case something happened in my home, um, whether it be theft or damage, I would have that data. I don't normally use it in the cloud because it's high speed required local, but hey, I'd rather have it in the cloud when I'm not here than not have it at all and, and to protect it. And it's not a terrible idea to have multiple backups, whether one be in the cloud and one local. Uh, I actually have three. I have one in the cloud, I have one local, and then I have another one local so I can take it with me. I also have a copy on my, my devices. But beware, folks. Google has just come out with a new product that's changing where we store our data. It won't be stored locally, meaning the hard drive is no longer going to be the, the quintessential component of our device. Um, if they get their way with this new drive file system, which is the business version of Google Drive, and I see it going that way, you'll have an option of syncing your data up to the cloud and not having it local on your computer only when you're connected, and a few of them could be offline, but it only, it streams back and forth, so you need to be connected all the time. Very interesting concept. Um, backup power packs, we're going to talk about energy bars, let's see, uh, cloud storage. Sync whatever you need. So if you have devices that sync between other devices and they're not doing it automatically or they're not working, make sure you check that before you go. It's always the day before you leave that something like that fails. All right. Um, an external drive. I keep one with me all the time. I've got a little Road Warrior C that goes with me. I think it was a couple hundred bucks. It's uh, a terabyte. It's not super fast but it's great, and if I need to bring stuff with me, I can, or if I need to transfer stuff. Thumb drives are genius. I love the new thumb drives that have USB-C on one side and USB-3 on the other so that you can go back and forth. It doesn't make any difference. Grab one of those. Put in, you know, important data on it if you need to. If you have remote logins, test them. Make sure they're working. If you have VPNs, make sure they're working. Okay, and this is a big one, set firewall to on, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment. Download any tickets, passes, and registrations you might have made, right? I wanna see you take all this stuff and put it on your devices. And that kind of goes with adding cards, which we're gonna talk about uh, to your iPhone or your, your Android uh, payment engines so that they're there with you if you get stuck and you can use it. More and more and more, you can use your device now to pay. It's almost 50%, in fact, it's great because I can do it at the 
the hockey uh, rink cafe, but I can't do it at other places. And only certain checkout lines at our Vons local grocery store actually work with these devices. So I choose those lines. It's really convenient. You can have all your credit cards with you and not actually have them with you. Um, business cards, if you use them, make sure you have them. If you swap credit cards for travel, make sure you have them, make sure they're paid uh, properly so that you can use them. If you're going to bring some swag, um, or what we call spa stuff people actually want. Uh, make sure you've got enough of it and it's, and it's properly stored. Uh, remember that your body is a billboard and that's capitalized because that's a, a presentation we do and also another webinar. If you're going to be uh, advertising your company or you're gonna be advertising anything or you wanna attract attention, I mean, if you're flying into Michigan and you're looking for customers at a conference, show up in a Buckeyes t-shirt. You've heard me say that before. That is a slam dunk way to make new relationships. All right, I'm going to end this poll and I'm going to start our next poll, which is how often do you travel? Let us know how often you travel. Uh, maybe a little cash for tipping. You know, it's not a terrible idea for tipping to have a little bit of cash, $5 bills, you know, getting four of those in your pocket for the hotel and, and, and valets and whatever it might be. Um, if you get in a jam, I've yet to meet a valet or, uh, or driver who doesn't have a Venmo or a PayPal account. And I know it sounds silly, but better than stiff in the person, you can say, hey, do you have Venmo? And within seconds, you can send them five bucks, three bucks, whatever it is. Great way to do it. Make sure you have a Venmo account. And again, add cards to your pay systems on your devices. <clears throat> add 50 bucks to your Starbucks uh, account, just so that if you get stuck and you're hungry and you didn't, you brought the wrong card or something went astray or you lost something, you still have your phone maybe, you can eat. <clears throat> and this is one of my favorites, excuse me. <clears throat> Buy tickets for sporting events before you leave. Whenever I get to a location where I'm, gonna, where I'm traveling, I like to look at sporting events or concerts or whatever, because you know I'm stuck for a couple of hours at night or whatever. Well, I always pay top dollar and sometimes I don't. So juggle this. Sometimes you wanna buy them before you leave because you wanna go, or sometimes you wanna wait till last minute because the price goes down. So either way. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So if you use an iPhone, this is all you need to do. You click on the settings. Right inside of general is software update. Run that update. On Android, it's a little more tedious. I'm not going to show you how to do it. If you're an Android user, you probably know how, or you don't. And in, in most cases, Android updates on its own. So you don't really get a choice. This is why at the Apple conferences, they always talk about how the iPhone is more current in its OS use than the Android. Well, it's because there's various carriers that are pushing out updates for Android and it's slow and sluggish. When iPhone has an update, everybody can get it instantaneously if they choose. Windows 10, all you have to do is click on the start button, go to settings, and inside of update and security, you click Windows update. Check for updates, run your updates, make sure they, they complete and it reboots and does its thing. You don't want to get on an airplane midway through updates and not be able to use your system because it's not connected. Finish your updates. All right. So this is my favorite backpack in the world. It's here today. It's not exactly the same as the one I have that's probably close to 10 years old. They come and go. Lululemon is a strange company. They make really great products. They're not just yoga clothes for women. This backpack that I've had, it's lightweight, it's durable, it's intelligent. Uh, it's so old, the one that I have, it has a picture of a Blackberry on one of the pockets. All the pockets have little pictures so you know what to put in them. Um, and then the later version, you can see the, the case at the top here, it had a hard sunglass case, which was cool, but not necessary. Mine was soft. Instead, in this version, uh, the latest version, they just have a big pocket in the top. And I think that's just fine. Um, I love mine because it's got a cable pocket in the top. And that's what I would put in the top there. I wouldn't put my sunglasses. But if you look at the various pictures, you can see the intelligence of how they design these things. Water bottles, pockets, 
uh, sliders. I love this, these little clever places to slide phones and things like that. Uh, very, very, very clever. Usually inside the pockets, there's other pockets and other zippers and other places to store stuff like batteries and, and what have you so they don't slip around. I'm a huge fan of this backpack. It's worth every nickel. I've had mine for 10 years and it looks like brand new. Although, hint, hint, great Christmas present, darling, if you're listening. All right. So pack up your backpack and put the things in it you need. And one of the things you need is a backup battery, whether you have one of those on the, on the back of your phone or I don't because my phone actually has a uh, pocket that holds four credit cards and that's all I carry. Now, when I travel, I throw my wallet into my backpack as well or my pocket and I will use that in conjunction. But in, in uh, my home area or relatively close, uh, four cards is enough. That includes my driver's license, an ATM card, and two credit cards. Now, if you're traveling like we were in Honduras and your ATM gets hacked, you might want to have a backup ATM card if you have more than one account, as we do. So that's a good idea. Either way, having your cards on your phone in place of a backup battery, I love, but it, I do carry one of these. I have an older version of this, Mophie and it's wonderful, it charges my iPad and my iPhone. I can keep it in my pocket with a cable that I'll uh, charge that device if I'm on the floor at a show or whatever it might be, traveling, it's awesome. All right, so what kind of cables and what kind of power ports do we use? Now, I'm gonna tell you straight up, these Anchor power line cables, they're really nice. I've stopped using them and started buying the Amazon Basics instead. I've had a few failures with the anchors. I don't believe that there's anything wrong with them. I think they just failed from time to time or there was a bad batch. I would recommend them. Their, their support's awesome. They'll send you a replacement. But I am now testing the Amazon Basics. They're a lot less money and they work great. However, this product from Anchor, I think this is a brand new one. We don't have this one yet. We have the older version, which looks like this here. And this is the older one with the USB-C. And what's so cool about this is two things. And let me explain it to you. And by the way, this one has apparently a higher, the, the power delivery or PD is the, the next latest and greatest thing. Now, don't be confused by this and this and the rest of them. If you look at the rest of them, you'll notice they're all USB 3 or 2 or 1, whatever it is, that the, not two, 1, but you can see the ports are all the same. Um, they don't blow up when you go to them, so it's harder to see. But on these two, you can see that they've got a USB-C or Thunderbolt 3, if you will, uh, connection. And what's great about those ports is that you can use them for two things. If you've got a USB-C or Thunderbolt 3, anybody with a MacBook that's you know latest and greatest is going to love this because they don't have to bring their Mac charger anymore. They plug it into that and they charge it, or a ThinkPad or some of the Leno or the uh, the, the HPs are doing this as well. But if you don't have a device that's USB-C and Thunderbolt 3, check this out. If you get a cable that's USB-C, Thunderbolt 3, whichever, and the other side is lightning, you'll be able to charge your new iPhone 8 or iPhone 10 or other devices that support this faster uh, power delivery model almost twice as fast and sometimes even more uh, which is great because if you're in a hotel and you need to charge your phone after an event, you can hop in the shower, pop it into that top port. The other ones are slow charging your, your watch and your other devices, but that top one is getting your phone 50% juiced up in just the time it took to get a shower. I wish they had more of those ports on that device. I just carry more than one. But again, I only carry that device and a series of cables when I travel and I have these all over the home. Uh, usually attached to something in the house so that no matter where we sit, you can charge anything you want or power your MacBook because that's what we use here. All right, so this is a really interesting phenomenon. When I was in Rancho Mirage during um, the fire event and we were evacuated, I was literally blown away <clears throat> by the fact that I looked on my, my Mac file browser. I'll go ahead and I'll bring that up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when you look at this 
uh, finder window, you will notice you can see devices here that are shared. And, you know, these are local devices in our home. Anybody who connects to our network, and this is the same for Windows or for Mac, but anybody that's on our network, I'll be able to see their device. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean I'll be able to see their device because they can disable it. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I'll be able to access their device because they can disable it. But you wouldn't believe how many people don't. And to prove my point, I actually went on uh, at the, the hotel and everybody who was shared on our Wi-Fi in our building, and there was a number of people and I checked and I clicked on them and, mo and most of them said, sorry, you can't access. I didn't even like the fact that it was broadcasting the name, but it said you couldn't access except for this one guy. And I very nicely, I went over to a document that I was able to access and I renamed the document, hey man, I can see this, be careful, turn on your firewall. Now, for those of you that are Mac users, you turn your firewall off because that's just the Mac way of doing things. I keep mine off. We don't need them, so to speak. We, we typically use other ways to, to handle that problem. However, you can turn it on, but for sure, when you arrive at a hotel, you must, whether it's Windows or Mac, turn on your firewall. Now on a Mac, you're gonna go into system preferences, you're gonna go into security, you're gonna click on firewall, and before you can do anything on the Mac, you gotta unlock, and then you can turn on your firewall. That's it, really simple work on a Mac. In Windows, click the start button, you open up Windows Defender Security Center, which is something new to me. There's firewall in there, you can turn it on and off. There's also all kinds of configurations and settings and different iterations of Windows that allow you to fine tune it. I would go with the vanilla. If you're having trouble using your remote connections or your VPNs or whatever it might be, so be it. Um, you may have to tailor it back or you may have to turn it off temporarily, but certainly don't hop in the shower, leave your laptop connected to a shared environment in a hotel or anywhere else for that matter without some sort of firewall protection because I'm gonna tell you right now, you're probably exposing yourself. Now, uh, I see that he's here with us today. Um, one of our uh, partners in, in 74, it, Micah Feldkamp is a Chromebook user. Not a terrible thing to have should you be traveling. And this new Google Drive file system is going to enable the ability to do uh, Google Chrome books and other types of, of thin client books that don't have local drive storage, uh, which means they don't have firewall issues typically because they're working in a server-based computing environment or, or cloud-hosted environment where all the data and the application is generally up in a Chrome browser and it's never actually being broadcast, it's just being screen scraped, so to speak. What you can see on one of these devices and what you can actually read in terms of data are very different. So the Chromebook does have a future. Um, it's a lot like the mobile devices and the iPhones, although some data gets stored back and forth, but the majority of it does not, which is why my kids freak out when they try to play Minecraft and there's no connectivity. You probably can relate if you're a parent. You have to have that connection because most of the data is stored in the cloud. Chromebooks are a very interesting animal. I have not tried one, but I would recommend for those of you that are concerned or nervous about that type of thing and have full-blown remote access, that you consider one for at least travel. Pretty neat idea. An iPad is another way to do it or another tablet type device. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things that's really cool right now about a brand new product. And this is something that I'm gonna segue into. I didn't plan on doing this, but I'm gonna segue into a quick Google Drive uh, discussion because this is something that just happened to us yesterday. And you can see that a lot of the stuff simply isn't even updated. Well, you can't see, but I can. There are things missing in my drive that haven't populated from my device downstairs. My drive is the traditional Google Drive. And why this is so important for this discussion, because if you're gonna use a Chromebook or if you wanna have security and you don't wanna have data on your device and you wanna be safer, or more 
for more of you, it's not even security. And I'll be honest with you, security, yes, but access is the primary thing. When you're in a hotel room and you need to deliver a presentation or you need to send a proposal or close a deal, you need access to your data. And when it's not there, it's rough. Well, the way we did it up until now was Dropbox or, or Box or uh, OneDrive. And what those devices do in most cases is they sync data back and forth between the Dropbox cloud and your local device. So if I were to open up my Finder again, you'll see that in Dropbox, I have various things. Like here's my signature. It's here local right now in my uh, computer. It's updating right now, so it may not, there it is. So my signature is here and my bookmarks are here and whatever else, they're all here, okay? All my taxes are here. But Jay can send, my CPA can send it up and down through Dropbox to this folder or any of these folders. And when he does that, he's putting it up in the cloud, but it's coming down onto my desktop if I want it to, meaning it's in my local storage. Now you can see my archive folder, I have the box unchecked or it's not green, which means all of that stuff is just in the cloud. If I want it, I can click on it and go access it. But for now, it's not taking up precious local hard drive space. Okay, well, Google Drive in the past looked at that the same way with their drive product. But then team drives came out in the business version. You have to upgrade and pay 10 bucks per user. And now you get pretty much unlimited data. But with team drives, you can see that everything we have is in the cloud. So if I want to update ABO today with a new, now that's up in the cloud, but you see how quickly it rendered itself. And I can go to Facebook right now and I can drag and drop this image or, or upload this image into Facebook, no matter where I am. Now, it, it's weird because it's, it, it took me an evening, I had to sleep on this to really get it. But what's happening now is Google Drive is caching this locally so that you get fast access to it, but it's not really here. It's just up in the cloud. Now, if I want it to be offline, I can right click on it and I can tell it to be available offline so I can work on it in an airplane. But this is not the default as it is with Dropbox and the other drive tool. The default is to have things syncing back and forth. This new system is the opposite. This is revolutionary to me. I wasn't anticipating it when I downloaded the product or upgraded our company. I did it because I wanted team drive storage. And now that I have it, I couldn't be happier so far. And the other thing is my MacBook, which has a very fast SSD, and my Mac Pro, which also does, but much smaller capacity, so I use an external drive, just got a lot more valuable to me because I don't need to have as much local. Now, I still have the big presentations and the big video editing local because that's better. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, with Dropbox, it would take too long to sync those, so I stopped. I'm going to test that with Google Drive um, file stream. Now, so there's no confusion. When you go up onto Google Drive, which is here, you will see your Google Drive and you will see your team drives. Your Google Drive and your team drives stay connected. It's kind of like Dropbox Personal and Dropbox Work. It's the same concept, but they're very different. Google Drive, syncs with both this drive file stream product, which is now looks like this. Where's my toolbar? Come on. There it is. Which now looks like, come on toolbar. So it looks like the icon right here. And that's a little bit different because the older drive uh, syncing tool became backup and sync, Google backup and sync. And that's what works with Drive exclusively, but not with the team product. The team product works with both, but it doesn't sync locally for the Drive products. So let me say that again. Google backup and sync works with my Drive. The uh, 
the product that I'm showing you here, the file stream works with both, but it doesn't work the same way with both. So you have an option, not storing locally, storing locally by using backup and sync, or you can use them both in conjunction. So one is syncing files back and forth and one is just streaming. I know it's confusing. Um, there's a lot of resources on it. If you Google uh, the new Google Drive or the new Google Drive file stream, you can read all about it. Anyhow, I have found it to be very useful. I'm very excited about it. And it's gonna be a great thing for us going forward. Now, before I go into, uh, I wanna share with you something that we're doing. It's called Accounting Workflow System. And before I do that though, I wanna go back to School of Bookkeeping. And I wanna make sure that all of you are aware of how this tool works. And what we've done is we've created a similar interface no matter what page you're on. And the idea is if you go to webinars, for example, and you wanna find something, we're gonna add that browse feature here soon. It's gonna be on every page. But what we do have on every page, I mean, you can just go back to home and then you can go back to browse, or you can go to the member center and we're testing a new left search bar. But we're gonna, we're gonna put it everywhere shortly. We're just testing uh, with heat maps and funnels to see what people are doing. But I wanna show you this. This is search. And it's a, um, I wouldn't call it a beta because it's working really, really well. Not only can you choose different options of what you want to search for, meaning if you want to search for courses or you want to search for webinars, you want to search for labs or everything. As you type, it'll start to populate. So we'll put in QuickBooks and you can see as things start to show, you can find pretty much anything. It's one of the greatest search tools I've ever found. And it'll search anything. So let's, let's search uh, the digital CPA, which is Jay Kimmelman. And there is his profile on schoolofbookkeeping.com. While I'm here, I want to make sure that any of you that are members or are, are going to continue to be members, please make sure you go to the referral directory and add yourself, create a listing, because that is very, very, very important. This listing will get you business and get you SEO exposure. And that is something that's very important for everybody and for what you're, the, the, the amount that you pay for schoolofbookkeeping.com each month to get that included is a huge, huge value. Okay, one other thing I wanna show you, inside of, and we've been working hard to make all of this stuff more mobile responsive, and you can see that if I, um, if I resize this window, it'll, it'll resize beautifully. So, but what I wanna show you is when you go into webinars, we've got our next live series here, and we've got what's new in the library. And what that basically means is everything that's coming up live is listed here, and you can scroll them. This one is yet to have a, an image put on it. That's gonna be a great webinar, by the way. This is crazy popular. This is our, uh, Nelly Acalp is gonna be our guest host. So this is almost completed. It'll disappear from live after we're done. And the next one is percentage pricing. Now, from that same screen, you can click our recorded library. And if you do, you'll see every single piece of content that we've created in the webinar uh, library. And you can go back and watch them at any given time as often as you wish. Let me end this poll question and ask another one real quick. And this is just curiosity for me. Android or iPhone? So I wish I could have put a Y on there. Um, you know, I'm an iPhone guy. Everybody knows that. Uh, Android's fine. It's grown quite a bit. Um, it's got a lot of features. They, they both get the job done. Um, neither. Curious what that is. Got to be a Windows phone or hopefully not a flip phone. I think, um, I don't know what that could be. Today, it's hard to use a Windows phone. They're pretty much non-existent, right? So, um, and if you're here for a travel, like a pro webinar, um, hmm, Blackberry? I'd love to hear that. Okay, so that's how you access some of the content here. Remember to turn on your firewalls when you travel. That's one of the most important I'm going to take this list right now 
I'm going to post it into, I don't think I can do the whole. Yeah, I'm gonna post it into the webinar chat for you. If it'll let me, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's cool. And make sure you follow this list to the best of your ability. There's a few things that are of course missing, but there's some great stuff on here. All right, so real quick, accounting workflow system. So what is it? So we have, des we have designed a tool, and we're gonna have a webinar on this or a webinar on this soon, that allows accounting pros, bookkeeping professionals, anybody who runs a service industry type business, uh, this one in particular is focused on accounting <clears throat> or uh, bookkeeping. But what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to control your business from bringing in a lead to bringing in uh, or taking that lead and converting it to an opportunity, taking that opportunity, converting it into a project, and then assigning pipelines uh, to those projects so that you follow them along and you never are, are without knowledge of either what you're doing or what your team is doing. It's an amazing management tool. It's an amazing tool for you to manage projects and tasks, workflow, leads. It just works. And what we've done is we've taken a series of tools, put them together, and made them better. And what I mean by that is we've taken some industry standard tools and enhanced them and fixed the quirky parts of them to make them work better. So at the end of the day, the solution is relatively inexpensive. We'll be talking more about that soon. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of it. All right, so our next webinar is going to be an interesting one. And this is something that I have wanted to do for a long time. Billing in this industry, or any, is often uh, one of the challenges we face, should I say. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of people that still bill by the hour. Go for it, whatever works for you. Uh, there's a lot of people that have now adopted a different mentality, which is the, the value pricing model, which means you're pricing for a, a certain price, you provide a service. This is more or less what we do. But then there's the percentage pricing model, which kind of does um, more like the value pricing, but also at the same time, it protects both sides. And we're going to go into how that can work for um, service professionals like yourself. Because if you have a client that as a result of your work is just soaring to new heights and you are still getting paid the same, that's a problem. If you have a client that is not doing as well as they once did uh, and they're still paying you the same amount, you've got a problem. And because this scales up and down and you can kind of see it, and it's interesting, one of our, our new clients is Finograph and their new pro, uh, product Flight, which gives you, a, a, you know, an instant bird's eye view of your cash flow. And as you examine cash flow, whether it be your own or your clients, you can fluctuate the amounts within a certain framework of how much you're going to charge them in any given month based on a 30 day past history. So we're gonna show you how that works. We're gonna talk about percentage pricing and see if this is something that the industry might be interested in. Okay, last poll question. So I am curious, have you learned anything useful today? And while you do that, I am going to check my drive status. Looks like it's still going, still waiting on a series of files to come. Um, if you do the transition, please make sure uh, to the new Google Drive, please make sure that you spend the time to research it uh, and you take time offline to do it because it's gonna take time to sync. It's gonna take time for your system to push that data up into the stream. Uh, mine works throughout the night. It's still going. Uh, it's slower than Dropbox because it's doing something different. It must be building some kind of crazy index. So if you try this new team drives feature, uh, I would highly recommend you make sure you leave yourself plenty of time to do so. All right. So once again, up next, we'll show up here shortly. It's percentage pricing, but more importantly, 
when we're done with today's presentation and the recording comes and we do our video editing, which is an event that we'll be showing you shortly, it will be in the library, hopefully within about 48 hours if we don't get evacuated. My name is Eric Greenspan. Thank you for joining us for a schoolofbookkeeping.com webinar. We look forward to seeing you next Friday and every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific.